name is Vitali, and uh, today I'm going to talk about nested virtualization testing on uh, x86. So, um, about myself, I don't usually do introduction slides, but I think that this time is important because it will affect the way how I present nested virtualization testing. I usually do uh, Linux as a guest on third-party hypervisors, and I'm also involved in KVM community because I do uh, Hyper-V enlightenments for KVM, uh, and uh, I am also involved in testing, running like Hyper-V on KVM and KVM on Hyper-V. So when I alternate between these things, I sometimes come back to running, for example, Hyper-V on KVM to find out that it's broken because we have a regression, and I don't like regressions, and that's why I decided to do this talk. So I decided to take a look how do we actually test nested virtualization. And uh, the thing is that uh, nesting in, in x86, it's not a new feature at all. Like, uh, as you can see, that Alex first introduced nesting on AMD more than like 10 years ago. And then we got it on like Intel. But for quite some time, it was rather like a baroque feature which uh, wasn't properly tested and not that many people were like using it. So, but nowadays we know that uh, it's been used in production and I hope these fine gentlemen are not against me <laughs> describing their use cases. So as we know that you can get a VM on Google Cloud where nesting is enabled and uh, on Oracle Cloud like Ravella use cases, right? We know that it's been used in production so it's becoming more and more stable, but still, uh, sometimes we do have some regressions. And uh, uh, I decided to take a look, like, how do we actually test it? Like, wh why do these uh, regressions happen? Oops, sorry. Uh, so um, we obviously have some test suites for KVM. And uh, what, what can we do to actually test that nesting is working? Well, first we can write tests to actually test like nested features, right? So, uh, for and we actually do this, we have like VMX and SVM tests in KVM unit tests. I will try to go over them and show like how, like what's been tested, what's not been tested, and like how many of these tests we have. Second, what we can do is we can just launch a VM as like L1 and run all our test suits we have there to make sure that it behaves basically the same way it would behave on normal hardware. And of course we can just test nesting by using nested, right? So we can launch like level two VMs and check that it doesn't misbehave. So um, about this like testing frameworks, a few words. So first one is KVM unit tests. It lives in a separate like Git repo. It's fairly old and uh, it uses QEMU to actually run tests. It doesn't actually have to, so I think it would be like fairly easy to switch it to using something else, I don't know, like KVM2. It's just that there is no reason for us to do that. I mean, KVM works very well there. And the advantage is that it's like feature rich and uh, we can use, for example, KVM devices when we want to do testing. But uh, the disadvantage of the approach is that we can only do what QEMU is capable of. So if, for example, we want to test some specific sequence of ioctals, which QEMU will never issue, you won't be able to do that from KVM unit tests. So for that particular reason, there was another framework introduced by Google initially, and uh, it lives in Linux Git. It's called uh, KVM self-tests, and every tests in KVM self-tests is a small KVM user space. So basically, you can do everything you want, right? So you can issue any ioctals, create any guests, and uh, it has its own advantages, and that was the reason why Google uh, implemented it, because they wanted to test something we don't do in KVM. They have their own user space, and uh, they had to, right? So uh, the advantage, again, is that you can do anything you want, uh, but the disadvantage is that you actually have to do everything, right? So you'll have to re-implement KVM user space in each test. Of course, there is a library for that there, but it still requires 
some more work. And uh, there were some questions raised in the past, like will KVM self-tests replace unit tests? Do we need to like rewrite them all? And the basic answer is no, why? It works very well, it, they complement each other, right? So whatever you can do in KVM unit tests with like a feature-rich uh, QEMU, do it from there. And only if you have uh, some specific test which you would like to do in QEMU is not capable, maybe not yet capable of. For example, you want to test something which has just been introduced, right? Use self-tests. So um, let's run these test suites we have and see what nested related tests we have. So let's start with like KVM unit tests on Intel. If you run it, you will see something like that. The numbers are just amazing, right? So we have like 150,000 tests there and you may think, oh, we will never have any regressions there. Like with 150,000 tests, it's just impossible. True or not? Uh, so then you can try running the same on AMD, and you will see something like that. And shock, depression, everything. But, well, these numbers don't actually represent the same thing. We are actually comparing apples to oranges, but I will explain about it a bit later. So uh, let's go over VMX. And uh, I wanted just to see what these tests are, like what are these numbers, right? And I kind of grouped uh, what, what I, I kind of walked through this like VMX tests and KVM unit tests uh, to kind of explain myself what are the tests there. And I grouped them so if I misgrouped your test or forgot it completely here, just, sorry, excuse me, <laughs> it can happen. So first, uh, there are tests which mostly were uh, added the, the last. Uh, these are like correctness, let's call them this way, tests from, which were contributed by Google. These are tests like EPT, in VPID, and uh, what they do is that they try all possible input, right? And then just check if uh, the hypervisor is acting according to the specification. Basically like, okay, EPT, let's flip this bit, try this particular access, and by specification, we are, for example, supposed to receive like EPT misconfig. Do we actually receive EPT misconfig? That's how these tests behave. For like in VPID, also like all range of possible inputs, but we actually don't really test that it has any effect, right? That it actually flushes anything. We just check that it behaves like it's supposed to behave, like the return value is the same, but. So uh, yeah, we test a lot there, so. All, like basically we test all features which define the guest like uh, control MSRs like IO, exit bitmap, stuff like that. Uh, and uh, we, do, we, we do a good job there, like host state area and guest state area. Uh, but it's tested to the extent that we can launch in this state and we either like succeed or fail, right? We don't necessarily test that the control we just like tweaked that it has uh, the desired like behavior. We are mostly interested in the fact that uh, we will be able to actually launch or we won't be able to launch. So uh, we also test like shadow VMCS with all VMCS fields, which is pretty nice. So let's, uh, we have like older tests, which let me call them like functional test where we actually check that uh, the feature is working, right? So we just launch a guest and check that it was launched. We do like you know, see the shadowing and we do this like CR accesses and test that it works and stuff like that. For PML, for example, right? We access an address, we check that it was like we enable that uh, modification login and we access the address, we check that uh, we got the address in the log, then we check like PML overflow event and stuff like that. And we have a number of tests like that. Second, uh, the last group of the test is like regression test. I call them regression because they're grouped under regression <laughs> there. And because uh, if you read the comment messages, 
which like were introducing them, mostly you will see that, oh, look at KVM commit this. It explains what's going on. Actually, that's the only documentation you have for all these tests is like, look at commit messages. And uh, well, we do some nice job like testing that we haven't regressed, which is nice. So uh, for SVM, we basically on the same, almost on the same level on this uh, like functional tests. And that's the only group which is present there. We like run a guest, then we check like IO exit, right? We check some basic intercepts and some like basic features. And that's actually it. It's not much. That's why we see only 24. One other thing I forgot to mention is that in VMIX library, we decided to make every assertion a test. So when you see that there are like 100,000 tests, it's actually not true. It's like 100,000 assertions, which can actually represent for like in VPID, which we can call it like a single test with all possible inputs, right? It either succeeds or fails. So for, uh, for SVM, it's more like normal. So uh, yeah, we, we also test NPT, but uh, it's just a few tests, just a few bits there. Better than nothing, but the rest is missing. We don't do any uh, work like the same Google did for correctness of EPT. So we have KVM self-tests. As I described, this letter like uh, KVM user space, test cases KVM user space, and uh, currently there is no SVM library there. It's only VMX. And we have a number of tests which are VMX only, and some of them don't have to be, right? It's just because we were so lazy that we didn't implement the SVM library. For example, like SMM test with, uh, yeah, SVM enabled, right? We don't do that yet. But the good thing is that SMM test was added last year before, we were not testing SMM at all, right? It was broken multiple times. So um, that's it. Like, so if you run on your host your like, test suites, from when, for example, when you develop, you will go through these tests. And uh, what else can you do, right? Uh, you can try launching L1 guest and just run all the rest because like both like KVM unit tests and self tests, they have some tests which are not like nested tests, but they can still fail when you're running nested, right? When you're, for example, L1 or, or L0 is misbehaving. You cannot automatically tell which level is misbehaving, but you can see this. So um, the advantage is that in all these nesting test suites, the level two code is very, very simple. It's basically a few assembly instructions, not more. And uh, it may not reveal some issues, right? So um, that's one thing. Second, we already wrote all these tests, like why not just try running them there? We may find some issues there. And uh, of course, I mean, uh, compared to these dedicated test suites, we cannot do stuff which our level like one is not capable of again, right? So if we launch the same VM, we can only do stuff in L1 which the same VM and the hypervisor and underlying hypervisor is capable of. And as I mentioned that I'm also interested in, for example, running KVM on Hyper-V because like it's enabled in Azure. When in that case, you have no other choice, right? You don't have like a Hyper-V emulator, or at least I don't. So um, another topic which actually was suggested by Leran, who reviewed my slides, and that uh, we can also use nested tested, n nesting tested, <laughs> testing uh, as a way to test uh, the correctness of our hypervisor on a different hardware, right? For example, uh, when you are working on something, right, you will, and you write a patch for KVM, for example, and then you want to test it. But you will only test it on your hardware, on the hardware you have. 
right? How can you know that it's not gonna break on another hardware? And you can actually try uh, with L1 emulating the hardware you want or like going through the range of hardware. And for example, in Kimu, Paolo recently added uh, fine-grained VMX capability setting. So uh, before, as I was saying that uh, before, we were interested in like making sure that KVM runs on all existing hardware. Now we're interested in the fact if KVM runs on all possible hardware, which may not exist with this like particular set of VMX capabilities. But now you can create such a guest in L1, right? And then the nested hypervisor may or may not work. So uh, again, I mean, like, what I learned is that process matters, right? And um, how do we work, right? And, okay, we have like an issue we are working on and we write a test or write a patch for KVM and maybe a test and then we go, right? And run like test suites we have, they pass, we submit, right? So what if we also want developers to test a nested environment? So, well, it's doable, right? So you have all the artifacts, you build kernel, you build KVM, you build tests, but you'll have to copy them to the VM, launch them there, and people rarely do so, right? It's painful. So uh, what I was using in my testing, I was using a tool, right? A, a wrapper like in, around QMU written by Andy Lutomersky, and uh, what it does, it starts an L1 guest which shares root file system with the host. Basically the same approach the previous presenter had, right? It, it also uses 9P, and I'm looking forward to uh, trying this approach with Vert.io. Uh, so what it allows you to do is like basically you have, you have the same workflow, right? You can run all your tests you have, like run tests in KVM unit tests, but you see the result how this test would run in a nested guest, which is, which, is, which is pretty awesome, right? And then you can uh, do stuff like, for example, what if my level one is backed by like huge pages? Or what if I don't give it such like VMIX capabilities? Stuff like that. So it's pretty like powerful approach. So um, the thing is that I use it on my own and it's not anyhow integrated in the workflow, right? So other developers, don't do that or do it on their own, I just don't know. And uh, it's like an open question, I don't have a good answer to that, like should we actually like integrate it in like KVM unit tests, so make a dependency or write our own wrapper around QMU, for example, for our purposes? Do we want it for like KVM self-tests too? It's interesting. So, uh, Another thing I wanted to mention is that like what's missing, my personal wish list, which I hope that it's not gonna become my to-do list completely, but it may sometimes. So um, first, uh, SVM definitely needs more love, right? So uh, SVM library in self-tests, uh, this full correctness tests and unit tests, we can't move forward making it like fully supported without it. Uh, second, I'm probably, that's probably my personal thing, but I'm not fully comfortable with like event injections because it's very complex. And from debugging several cases, I'm not absolutely certain that we are doing the right thing in KVM even for uh, VM mix, not always, but for SVM, uh, we definitely need to rewrite the whole thing. Uh, like do check nested events to those who know that. But the thing is that first I suggest we at least add some tests there. And uh, yeah, I'd like to see more like system management mode testing and what's probably gonna become my to-do list is uh, Hyper-V enlightenments, like bring like enlightened VMCS testing to KVM unit tests, which has not been done yet uh, for then for buffer invalidation, I'd also like to see some tests because even if we tested the particular like in VPAD succeeded that I'd like to have a test which shows that the translation buffer was actually flushed. So uh, the last thing I wanted to say is give some credits to those who work on tests. So I collected some stats like who 
contributed to this testing framework since the last KVM forum. And I'd like to say thanks to these people uh, because tests are hard, right? Everyone wants to write code, nobody wants to run tests to, and to write tests, right? So these people did some work, so thank you. Uh, these stats are for KVM unit tests. They're not necessarily for nesting, but as I said, that even any test can be used as, as a nested test if you run it in like level one. And these are the stats for KVM self-tests. So thank you again. And with that, I think I'm done. So thank you for listening and if you have any questions. Uh, you described the KVM unit test code as mature. I would use other words. Um, <laughs> is there any chance that Red Hat would possibly fund a dedicated maintainer for KVM, self, uh, KVM unit tests? Um, there is hope. <laughs> Could you add that to your personal? No, I mean, uh, Andrew Jones over there, he's doing a great job for ARM, for example, right? But for x86, it would definitely appreciate some love. Yeah, I fully agree. Yeah, and the other aspect of that is I feel like with tests, because so few people contribute, the bar we set for them is significantly lower. So the code quality suffers greatly. Yeah. Our questions? So is Alex. So, so first off, the reason there's no AMD regression test is obviously because there's no regression. The perfect code is perfect, right? Um, That's yes, yes, about the event injection. So actually, already has been rewritten once um, by Jörg. So my original implementation was even worse um, than, than his one is now, but it probably is still off, off um, of what, what hardware actually does. Um, the interesting thing that I'm, I'm really um, curious on is the um, how, to, how do we get developers to actually run those tests properly and, and get the nesting environment in. And, the more I think about how to enforce testing onto developers, the more I get to realize that anything manual doesn't scale. Um, so we need to have something like a zero bot that just simply checks patches and checks pull requests on the mailing list and then just automatically runs those tests as they come in. Um, and then in that framework, we can also add nesting tests then as, as we go. Anything else just simply wouldn't work. Yeah, Alex, I, I fully agree with that, uh, but uh, the thing is, like, if we have, the, for example, this uh, KVM self-trust, right? And uh, now we have, for example, kernel CI, right? It's easy to tell them, go run this, right? If we had an easy way, right, to also run this, like, in nested, that would be only an improvement. And of, cor of course we need a CI. For some uh, things we don't, we cannot expect developers to actually test, for example, when we run KVM on Hyper-V, right? Who has Hyper-V environment around? I do. Who wants to test on like Azure? Not many people, right? But still we don't want to regret this with every patch which comes. And nesting is not a safe corner, right? We cannot say, okay, these patches touch nested in KVM and these don't. They all do in a way, right? right. So, uh, yeah, I fully agree that we need to think about, you know, like taking patches from the mailing list, running them through some CI. That's the only way to go, basically. What I'm trying to say is we need to make this a service, right? Yes. And then, and then it's going to work out. Um, and the, the path you showed with like scripts that actually run parts of what you have built on the host already in the guest context and such, if you just put a bit of wrapping code around that, you talk to a couple of people like, say Microsoft to get some free Azure hosting so that you can test nesting on there mm -hmm. and whatever, I'm sure we can get to um, a reasonably decent coverage. Sure, yeah, yeah. But uh, manual, it, I agree that it doesn't scale, but still, it, you're working on a patch, right? You wanna, no, check take it, that. Take it backwards, take it backwards. As soon as there's automated testing, 
and people get gated by that. They get so frustrated that their patches keep getting rejected that the manual thing is going to work out either way. Yeah, they, they, they will make that work. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So as soon as there is gating, they will have to, right? <laughs> to not get yelled at on the mailing list. So. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for your comment. Yeah. I fully agree. If there are no questions, thank you, Vidalis. Thank you.